Hello. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody, and good afternoon to all uh, present. Uh, I'm Alok Bhamik, and I'm the chairman of the Professional Development and Technical Events Committee of uh, Indian Association of Structural Engineers, and also the immediate past president of association. Uh, I welcome you all. I also welcome all the panelists, uh, our president, Mr. Manoj Mittal, Professor Achyut Ghosh, the speaker for the day, and Mr. B. N. Hegde, who is the moderator. The topic of today's uh, webinar is bridge bearings. And uh, we are very fortunate that we will be hearing from one of my favorite speaker, an eminent personality with a pretty high level of intellectual brilliance a person whom I know since my infancy in, in this profession, uh, since uh, early 80s, I know this gentleman, a person who made his indelible mark in the bridge bearing industry. And uh, perhaps today, he is one of the most experienced person in India on the topic of the day, that is bridge bearings. Uh, uh, today's session will be moderated by Mr. B. N. Hegde. Mr. Hegde is also a pretty well-known personality in the profession. He hardly needs an introduction. And I have the uh, privilege to introduce him uh, to all the participants though. Mr. Hegde is the former uh, Chief Executive Officer of Stoop Consultants Private Limited and former Executive Director of uh, Gammons, a versatile experience of over three and a half decades in construction sector in the area of design and management. Uh, he is uh, he is a very rare personality who is uh, equally adept to the design as well as to construction. He excels in construction management, project management, contract management for highways, bridges, energy structures, environmental, marine, and hydraulic structures. He is a recipient of several awards, uh, uh, national recognition as well as international recognition. Uh, in fact, I remember that he is the, I think he's the only perhaps uh, young uh, engineer uh, who received the IABAC award for young engineer way back. He's also a member of several uh, court committees of IRC, BIS, and the uh, also uh, international associations like FIB, various task groups. Uh, he is also an intellectually uh, br brilliant personality, a fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineering. So without uh, further ado, uh, let me uh, begin this event by welcoming Mr. Hegde, our moderator, to start the proceedings. Mr. Hegde, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Alok, for that uh, the nice introduction. In fact, uh, I'm very uh, you know, grateful to you for that uh, introduction, which uh, I do not know, I deserve that uh, adulation and the appreciation you gave I me in mean, that introduction. But uh, uh, I tell you that we have got a very special personality among ourselves today uh, in the form of uh, octogenarian uh, who was born in 1941, Mr. Achut Ghosh. And he's, though he's an octogenarian, I tell you that he's a good friend of mine. The age difference is quite a lot, but he's a He's a good friend of everybody, I should say. He's an amiable personality and uh, is, is such that he's, he's friendly with everybody and he's outright in his uh, uh, outspoken way of uh, you know, talking about the things. And uh, he is going to speak about the bridge bearings today. And uh, as far as his introduction is concerned, it has been uh, well explained in the flyer. But what is not explained in the flyer, I'm just going to highlight. Mr. Achyut Ghosh is, uh, you see, his uh, a sense of criticism always remind me of the sense of uh, uh, humor, which uh, Utpal that uh, of his, you know, like the, the same pedigree, you know, like from the, uh, the West Bengal, always he reminds me. He belongs to that school of thought uh, with his vast experience that uh, an engineer is not complete unless he has worked at the site or the ex has the exposure to site. A complete design engineer is one who has an exposure to site and understand the difficulties of the site. That's what he always believes in. And whenever it's an opportunity is there, he advises the youngsters. I fully agree with him. 
with the background which he has come. He is not only a sort of a Bhishma Pitama, what uh, our Bhomik said in other words, or the bridge and expansion uh, industry in our country, uh, just to, as a manifestation of that, you can see as, is, as has been written in the uh, flyer, that uh, he has been the member of B5 and B6 committee since 1967. I think most of our uh, uh, people, most of the people who are in the audience may not have been born uh, since he has become the member. So uh, since the inception of the Bridge and Expansion Joint Committee, perhaps he has been the member. So he's a founder member of that uh, uh, particular committee, I, I can say. He, he knows A to Z in the Bridge and Expansion and also the, some of the technologies which has been introduced recently. Uh, that, uh, that is the base isolation system, seismic transmission units, and all these uh, systems, which is analogous to the bridge and the expansion as well as the bearings, which allows the translation as well as the rotation, which is going to talk in its own uh, style. And he's, he has a mastery in that too. I think in, in today's presentation, perhaps he's going to touch upon that. As has been the case always with the, uh, the, the West Bengal, uh, uh, the known engineers, uh, uh, Mr. Ghosh is also known for his uh, acumen in the design and uh, of the steel structures, you know, it, it, it is ingrained in them. Whoever comes from the West Bengal, the Shivpur University, I think they all talk about so many universities, you know, he's also from Shivpur University, if I'm not mistaken, Jadavpur University, uh, you know, Bengal Engineering, there are so many universities. Whenever I uh, meet these octogenarians and septuagenarians, I was always, you know, end up talking about these universities. And, and those people are very, very good at the design of the steel structures. That is a, that's what is, uh, you can see in this uh, uh, experience of uh, design of the piling equipment, various uh, steel plants like molding machines, defense factories like transfer cars, all, all has the component of the steel structures. And that is ingrained in, you know, like this, the design of the steel structure. I think he must be reading this, you know, composition of the steel, like the back of his uh, uh, palm, what we, uh, what we talk about. And as far as his presentation is concerned, it's got his uh, own style of presentation. I think we'll come to know now. And uh, it will not be a conventional presentation. It's a mix of uh, uh, all, uh, all this one. And perhaps he'll be having the advices uh, to the junior uh, or the uh, engineers who are budding engineers who are coming out, uh, come out of the colleges. That's very much uh, required in it. And uh, in his presentation, I hope that you'll be touching upon some of the sensitive issues which the industry has been facing, like, you know, like the seismic transmission units, whether we have to use the seismic transmission units, or what are the use of uh, that, whether it can be really idealized properly in the analysis, uh, because the seismic transmission units have to lock at the same time, if it's used at the different PS, how, how, how it is effective. And also we have been talking about the, the needle beam uh, expansion joints these days and uh, there are some uh, issues in this that's what uh, some of the experienced people are talking about i hope he'll be touching upon i'm sure uh, you all you'll be enjoying this uh, uh, presentation of Ms. dr ghosh and uh, the that the testimony of this has been already expressed by the number of people who have been registered for this program i was told by alok bomik the maximum number of uh, participants have registered for this program. That itself is a testimony of the popularity of uh, Dr. Achyut Ghosh. Uh, enjoy his presentation. Dr. Ghosh, this is, uh, the floor is yours. Of course, it is virtual. I would have loved to have a, you know, like physical floor along with you uh, to listen to you physically. It's yours now. Sir, good afternoon yeah. to everybody. Am I, uh, can you hear me, sir? Can yes, you hear me? Yes, 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 we can clearly. Yes, fine. Sir, Alok and Hegade, yeah. Mr. Alok and Mr. Hegade, they have told so much about me. I don't deserve all these things. <laughs> I am a down to earth practical engineer. But I, I appreciate one thing that Hegade has told about me that I don't like engineers to come out of the college and enter the design office. It is not done thing. And there they will never be a full good engineer. The full good practicing engineer has to go to the site, has to learn from the site. So the first, there are three stages of learning. The best place of learning is site. Then the next best place of learning 
is the workshop. And the last place of learning is the office. That is my view. And I must thank I think, Mr. Ghosh, I think your uh, connectivity seems to be poor. No. No. Hello? Is Mr. Ghosh's connectivity poor? Um, um, yes. I think it looks like, yeah. Yeah, I think we have lost his connectivity. Up for talking so good about me, which I don't. I think all of you like to bath for sometimes it's a technology issue. I think let us... Uh, uh, let us, uh, uh, yeah, I think he has come back, I think. Uh, uh, can, yeah, can now we can hear it. In between, there was yes. a little bit problem, Dr. Ghosh. Yes, yes, there was problem. Can you see now? Yeah, the we screen? can. No, screen is not seen. I think you will have to share that. Share the screen first. Yeah. I see, I see. I'll do that. Uh, I have to learn to do it. Just a moment. Uh, how do I do it? There is a green button, share screen at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But I have gone out of the screen. That is the problem. Ah, that's it. Yeah, share screen. Is it all right now? No, no, no. Once you share screen, you yes. have to click on the, you know, that whatever the screen is coming on. The, uh, uh, your file. You have to click on your file. Ah, you have to click on the file. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming now. I mean, it's coming. Yeah, it has come. You go to the slideshow. 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 It's okay now. Just click it. Ah, that's ah, yes. perfect. 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 Right. <clears throat> so anyway, I don't go through this. This is done. Now, <clears throat> these are the various types of bridge bearings that we are having in our code part one. This has been assembled here to show the various options we have in our hands. Now, it's, it's really very fascinating for me to present this slide to the engineers, the, the learned engineers who are present. But anyway, we start from the primer, beginning. This is PA. This is beer. This is a deck. This bearing I am calling free bearing. This bearing I am calling a fixed bearing. These are expansion joints. Fundamentally, this is what is a bridge bearing is meant to do. It, it is to bear the vertical loads, restrain or allow horizontal forces, restrain or permit horizontal movements, permit rotation, along either both axes. Now, <laughs> this slide I have just introduced for the fun of it. You see, how much the bridge bearing has to perform? Look at this intersection. Somebody has done it. Engine, some engineers have done it. But look at the services that the bridge bearing has to provide in presenting this kind of structure to human civilization. That interested me. So I included this in my slide. Now, <clears throat> the presentation will go along this. All these points will be touched. And the point which has been enlarged, that we'll discuss in the next few slides. So this is my classification. I did it 50 years back. VB, VM, VF, UB, UM like this. This, this left-hand side shows the permissible rotations, but so rotation in all axis, uni rotation in one axis, locked. So various, and this is movement, biaxial, monoaxial, fixed. And you can have various combinations. Really speaking, kindly appreciate that today's bridge bearings are no more the unit thing. There are two units assembled together. And 
So every kind of unit for movement, for rotation, they've got various options available. So you make your combination to suit the structural pattern, the structural behavior needed out of the bearing. This kind of combinations, VB, VM, VF, UB, UM, UF, like that. Next, types based on functional capacity. This is the oldest. Achudda, I, uh, yes. I think P, there is a reaction I am getting that you are not very audible. Can you speak closer to the mic? Yes, please. Yes, please. I will try. Can okay. you? Is now, it okay now? Yeah, yeah now, now it is okay. Now it is, is it okay. okay now? I yeah. think yeah. somehow during lecture, the mic has gone away from me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We are not accustomed to do our lecture like this. Yeah, our yeah. classes you take normally with I don't require any mic or anything in the class of 50 or 100 people. Anyway, so this is our uh, sliding bearing, the basic fundamental. And you attach some stainless steel, you attach PTFE, make the combination different. So this is our fundamental steel rocker and roller bearing. Uh, we are using for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, steel rocker and roller bearing. This is the rocking face and these are the rollers. It can be multiple, it can be single roller, no rocker additional. It could be two roller, three roller, four roller, like that. The, 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 a roller bearing come rocker bearing set in the 120 meter span, double board gauge railway line weighs 52 ton. I'll come to that. So this is our contact, how a round, outside round face, outside round face, they contact each other. This is a negative with a positive contact and then linear contact. This is the fundamental um, mathematics behind that. You can look up in the book by Timoshenko. These are the various IRC guidelines giving how much load you accept from one roller, two roller, or three or more roll, two more rollers, and then IRC 83 part one, IRC 83. Uh, they, are, uh, this was earlier kg and this is now. This was earlier kg, this is now in Newton. Now, <clears throat> mostly uh, railway, uh, we, we all have the roads, Indian Roads Congress, they have published their allowable values. Railways are quite strict about it. Everybody is strict about it, but railways design is very specific and in one table, they have formed, these are the permissible loadings. This is between knuckle bearing. This is the permissible loadings. So whenever you use any design with railways, we use this term. One more very interesting thing is, all of us use this to increase the permissible stress. We use this formula. Now, to really speaking, what is the basic philosophy of this is that it must be a prism. The point of contact and the point where the prism ends, it must be a continuous prism. If any of the side gets cut, then you don't get the help of the portion ratio. So this formula will no more be valid. If any of the side is cut, then you don't get the advantage of this increasing permissible stress. So we come. This is an elastomeric bearing. By the way, uh, my slides are some of them by Metco, my earlier organization. Some of them from Magiba. I worked there for some time. I was I as a consultant there. And then these are the Magiba elastomeric bearing. Elastomeric bearing has got a great advantage. It can behave as a virtual biaxial 
Barso monoaxial, Barso fixed. In our IFC, I am being sad to say that there was a, for a long, long time, uh, there was a notion that elastomeric bearings might not be used in a seismic application. But honestly, it does absorb energy. If you look at the card, then elastomeric bearing getting gets heated, but it can take various cycles and it can really reduce the amount of force being transferred from the accelerations due to seismic forces. And now all the supports of seismic appurtenances going below point of columns in a structure, in hospitals and all, they are mostly made from elastomeric bearing, but there are difference in the qualities, high density, etc., etc. Again, this elastomeric bearing, you can just rest on the concrete. The friction coefficient is 0.33. So though you can put boundaries, you can grout, you can do all these things, but the horizontal force will not exceed more than 20%. So this just putting the elastomeric bearing on the seating, doing the casting of a bit is enough for adherence. But then in some of the cases where we expect long movement or large horizontal forces, chances of flipping or even maybe the top structure is steel, the bottom is concrete, we sometimes encase the elastomeric bearing with steel base plates. And the, the bottom phase of the elastomeric bearing is tied with bolts to the steel base plate, same as the top phase of the elastomeric bearing, tied with the top plate by in nuts, four, six nuts are inserted in the location of the top and bottom location. And then from this top of this plate, which is covered, bolts are used to tighten so that integral the steel plate becomes integral with the top of the elastomeric bearing and here is one where you can see this uh, elastomeric bearing with steel base plate integral is being installed in a in a pier in a in a, it's a, in a city city flyover in a pier in a city flyover this is, that was not my country. This is my country where elastomeric bearing has been installed just on concrete pedestal. And this is top deck. You can see something very interesting. You will see parabolic protuberances. Elastoma, a, a mass of elastomerman can be considered as a fluid. So when you press on top of it, it expands. The, the vertical dimension gets shortened and that amount of uh, elastoma gets out in protruding form, parabolic protrusions in the layers. So this is the way the equations and the stress level in the elastoma is calculated. So here is a pot bearing seals, elastoma pot, then piston. This is the pot. This is the elastoma containment inside the pot. This is the piston. This is the sliding phase. These are guiding. This can behave as a barso biaxial without this guide, barso monoaxial with this guide, or not. This is not present, it becomes barso fixed. I'll show you in the next slides. One thing I like to tell you, sir, in my various visits to European bridges. American bridges where the pot bearing has been used, I saw with my own eyes that these 
I am sorry. Then I was not using digital computer uh, ca com, uh, camera, but it is there in my um, uh, Nikon uh, negatives. Uh, this 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 elastoma due to the failure of the seal. There has been great improvement in the seal technology. But however, in those days, I'm talking about 40 years back, some of the elastomers came out. So I will suggest one to one, anytime a pod bearing or uh, carved, I'll, I'll come to that side, PTFE sliding bearing carved, that will be much better choice compared with a pod bearing. So, this is a <clears throat> some this will take horizontal forces and so the amount of foundation connectivity is enormous very large forces i don't remember the forces very large force this is the design philosophy this is the piston this is the container these are seals these are nothing but seal this is seal this is seal. Dust is a great enemy to PTAP and stainless steel. This is stainless steel. This is PTAP. Dust is a great enemy. And this face and this face, this may be cast steel, this may be mild steel, but we always do additional metal deposition by welding hard facing so that we are is much less and this is curved there is always a clearance for operations in micrometers the clearance is required otherwise it will not operate so the moment there is some clearance for operational function there will be wear so we have to increase the life of the bearing we have to hard face it and this <coughs> is you can you can do <coughs> the whole thing the failure by finite element method. You all know, we, you are all my, my, my listeners, they are all learned people, they know APM technology. So today you fit up uh, these parameters in APM technology and you can find out the stress level. But earlier we used to design with the orange slice and consider this as a cantilever with respect to the bottom base orange slice and uh, as a cantilever it was designed those thickness section for moment this depth all this was designed and it worked fine so that philosophy is still maintaining but you can go to <clears throat> higher competency by this APM method but I can suggest one thing sir from my experience of 60 years in engineering that is don't go for uh, material saving so much you know we don't know all the forces that is we encountered in nature so keep something in hand don't go by 95 percent 99 percent of the permissible stresses after all the permissible stresses are not also god gifted they are all sort of certain assumption basis certain eccentricities and all these are built up anyway that's another subject i will not talk on it I'll talk in some other lecture. This is the polyoxymethylene seal, palm seal. So from the days of, <clears throat> this is showing blast seal, phosphorus drone seal, but this is palm seal. From the days of blast seal, phosphorus drone seal, today a palm seal is a much better option. <clears throat> this is only pod wearing. It permits rotation in all axes, in all axes, and but it doesn't permit any sliding, no translation. So this is part of it. But it can with a, with a PTAP and stainless steel top, it can behave like a part of biaxial. That means it permits rotation in all axes, and then it permits movement biaxial monoaxial as in the next slide these are monoaxial with side guides this is monoaxial with 
central diet. With all these bearings, it handles very large forces, but I can assure my listeners, my friends, that a, a piece of elastomeric bearing, a rectangular, square, round piece of elastomeric bearing is a marvelous development in engineering. It has lasted more than 100 years. That I'll show you in some other slide. And this is very versatile. It gives rotation in all directions. <laughs> it permits sliding in all axes and you can restrain it and you can give lateral and, uh, trans and, and longitudinal additional guides so that, that those functions are not performed by the bearing but by additional stoppers. That we have used in, um, uh, in all the flyovers in Delhi 1978 and all. This is a very, very long bridge in, I mean, three kilometer long bridge in Rajasthan with various kinds of bearings applied depending on the span. Somewhere it is crossing railway lines. As it is there in this span, it is crossing railway lines. And this is over uh, roads and other places. This, in the same bridge, a pod bearing is installed and elastomeric bearing is installed in the same bridge. This is a spherical knuckle bearing. To me, this is an absolutely marvelous thing. This is better than, well, as Mr. Hegade in his introduction told, uh, which I appreciated very much, that I don't, I'm not afraid of calling a spade a spade. We have developed certain things. The whole engineering fraternity has done the development, not me in particular. But then let us use the best developed technology in various applications. Here, this can take enormous amount of load. This lubrication you can apply at the beginning, but PTAP stainless steel will work with or without lubrication. And uh, this is a very, very solid bearing. And I am keen for spherical knuckle bearing very much. This is another view, sectional view, how the PTFE is spaced, how stainless steel, PTFE, stainless steel and all that. And this is the side guide. Side guide has got a peculiar thing that if you have to permit rotation in this axis, in this axis, or or sliding it, so this this support system must have it must permit rotation. Otherwise, there will be stress concentration and we are much faster. So this is something very interesting. This has been blown out below. This is very interesting philosophy. These are two views, PTAP, only PTAP sliding. As I said, modern bearing is a combination of a sliding element and a rotation element. Rotation element can have freedoms and restraints. The sliding element can have freedoms and restraints. And these various kinds of sliding elements has been shown here. Without any restraint, with restraint outside, with the stream inside. This is an actual view of uh, this. You are seeing the reflection. The PTF is here. This is the stainless steel. This is polished stainless steel. So you are seeing the reflection. It is not PTAB, PTAB collection. PTAB, stainless steel. This is the reflection. So this is the spherical knuckle bearing. This is the bottom female part. This is the top male part. One more thing, this PTAB is very white in color. But then a new thing has come up, this high-density polymer, uh, this 
U H M W P E. This is in the coat. So this is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. So what what is the advantage of this one over PTAP? Plain PTAP. Whether there is traffic on the bridge or whether there is fine seismic forces. There is a continuous movement of the top plate with respect to the bottom support, whether it is PTAP or it is UHMWPE. So there is a continuous movement, movement like this. So there is a wear. The PTAP gets worn out. So we, so you can in a laboratory. You can measure the path of travel, the length of travel. Normally, and you know, uh, when you give more pressure, the friction of PTAP goes down. That's something very special. So it has been sound that this UHM WP, this material gives about four times the wear path length before changing. That is, one is about five kilometer plane PTAP, some total of path. Another is about 20 kilometer. Even after 20 kilometer in this UHMWPE, not much wear is visible. This element that you are seeing is after laboratory testing. This has been already 20 kilometer testing has been done on this. This is the uh, graph for 20 kilometer. And this is the wear. This is the wear. Not a pre test. <clears throat> Okay, so this, you, you have seen the, you have seen the, uh, the, the, the grease holes, the silicon grease pockets. So this 50 years back or maybe 60 years back, the German beam coat, they have stabilized the dimension, the depth, the distance, the spacing of this grease containing uh, depressions and that is being followed all over the world. This has been standard worldwide though it is European in origin. This is a disc bearing. This is not, this is hardly 40 years. It has been discovered in America. <clears throat> But they use it quite often. This, instead of a confined elastomer inside a pot and a piston, this is the open polyethylene with a curved, inside curved outer face. This permits you the required rotation, degree of rotation. And the thickness determines the amount of rotation. This is a, a beautiful material and this has got very long life, etc. Now, this is the disc bearing, but so fixed. Disc bearing, but so monoaxial. Disc bearing, but so biaxial. These are Elemental representation of Bartso fixed, Bartso monoaxial. Now, uh, next uh, few minutes will be a little bit boring since I'll be talking about some notes, general notes on bridge bearing. What one should do for selection of bridge bearing, selection of dimension, etc. Now, this says the arrangement and layout of bearing shall be considered in conjunction with the design of structure and shall be compatible with the structural system of the bridge. 
I, I'll explain what it means. Structure analysis shall duly account sensitivity of the structures to settlement and deflection of the substructure and foundation. The bearing forces and movements resulting from such consideration shall then be given to the bearing manufacturer to ensure that the bearings provided meets the requirements as closely as possible. What it means is a deck is designed for some deflection of the substructure, some subsistence of the substructure that in our own way we can calculate the from the soil properties and from the dimension of the sphere we can calculate the possible uh, subsistence of the pier system in the lifetime lifetime of the bridge. There has been new developments in bearing so that the bearing height can be increased by pumping fluid inside. This, is, this has been already used. But however, we are not considering that system at the moment. We have to take care that if one pier amongst <clears throat> all this subsides by 10 millimeter, then there will be an angle in the two connecting uh, simply supported spans or if it is a <clears throat> continuous span. But the continuous span has been designed to take care of this 10 millimeter deflection, but the bearings also has to take care of this. And also, in a in a in a in a in a uh, global system, the piers will have some amount of uh, springness, spring constant. It, uh, if you apply a force, the pier will deflect. Maybe the bearing will deflect much much more compared to the pier, but however, it will deflect. So when you do the calculation, we have to take care of that deflection also. <clears throat> this is second part. <clears throat> bearing arrangements, which under certain conditions of loading, require bearing to resist uplift and liable to result in excess. You see, whenever there is a uplift force, the, there is a lot of friction between the bearing, a lot of up and down, up and down between the bearing forces. And you have to hold down the uplift forces. It can be done by two ways. One, a pin to the bearing system or an external pistaching system. Both systems have been used. But I think the last word, talking the last word about this system has not yet come. Maybe our engineering fraternity will come out with some better system in future. Both, both the systems of locking by central pin you know, in Ultodanga, the whole thing failed due to the replace, due to the change in, in place position of the tension bearing and the non-tension bearing. Anyway, that's another story. But here and the long tension in a short length, the tension provided by bars and all, uh, with creep and all, they get uh, they get uh, reduced. That is something I want to point out. And this is the point four, that is in past, that has been significant develop in recent past in the design manufacturer with seismic devices, energy dissipators. Bearings are often used as seismic devices in seismic areas with elastomatic bearings, which influences the seismic response of the structure. The seismic response of the structure, the, the performance of the bearing, the, the additional um, um, uh, stiffness K introduced in the whole structure by the bearing has to be considered to find out the seismic response. And in uh, 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 the specific uh, specific uh, seismic devices can have lead rubber bearings that is for base isolation, high density rubber bearings, pendulum. That's a very interesting uh, thing that's pendulum bearings. Strum, structural damping devices, STUs, PSGs. PSG is another development. It's a beautiful development. The spring here is from fluid, silicon fluid. 
it behaves like spring. That uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the the lecture will take four hours. I have not. We have worked on it in Mageba. They have used pre uh, preloaded spring damper. I have designed on this, uh, but unfortunately, I cannot go into it. But anyway, uh, this is from Mageba. Um, these preloaded spring dampers. Uh, these are being tested in a group. Now, layout of bearings below a deck. Here I want to, anyway, you may not read it. I want to introduce the subject, the concept of null point. In, in all uh, deck, when you are fixing the bearing, you have to find the bearings, whether there will be parts of weak, parts of biaxial, parts of um, monoaxial or unimonoaxial, et cetera. So there we take the help of a null point. What is a null point? In a deck, <clears throat> Uh, the null point is this one. So the bearing movement will be along this axis. The bearing movement will be along this axis. The bearing movement, the deck will expand along this axis. So this is monoaxial. This is monoaxial. After all, I have to take care of the lateral forces. Lateral forces will come. So I have to provide this. I have to provide this. And this will not take any lateral forces. This will permit movement in both axes. Now, in another case, this is the null point. Now, this, as you can appreciate, this movement will be at this axis, this movement will be this axis, this movement will be the, these two will provide the lateral support, and this is monoaxial, these are longitudinal axis. Now, one point, if three bearings are giving longitudinal support, only one, each bearing has to take the whole force. You cannot divide it. Since these are mechanical things, they cannot share equally. But however, if this is the elastomeric bearing, then you can share the forces. That is the big advantage of elastomeric bearing. Now, one thing, friction. When friction is your friend, you do not consider it. No advantage. When friction is your enemy, you have to take the full value, 0.08%, whatever. The combination of metals, whatever is permitted by the code, you have to take the full value when friction is your enemy. Next, we are coming to testing. This testing picture was taken in Metco. You see, this bottom face with respect to the top face has been moved twice the depth, the, the actual rubber depth, not the steel depth. The actual, the sum of the rubber depth in testing, the bottom face is taken twice. After that, there is a lifting of the edges. Now, this Photographs is included to show the parabolic bulging. Whenever you compress to 100 kg per centimeter square, then you see the parabolic. This particular photograph, the parabolic bulging has come out so beautifully. So this is the expansion of the volume. The internal volume between the layers must go somewhere. Rubber elastomer is not complete, it's, it's, it's compressible, but it's not volume. It volume doesn't get deflected so much, some extent. So, like water, water you compress the volume, but silicon fluid, the volume you can, you can compress the volume, it gets lesser. So, as you can see, the main the dial, these are called dial gauges. This measures the horizontal movement. This measures the vertical movement. There are four such dial gauges in the four corners. Now, you know, uh, in testing earlier, I have not shown the whole gamut of testing. There are triaxial testing machines, and <clears throat> there are various other testing machines being developed. In Magiba, uh, I, I, I am no more there, but we started a testing machine 
which will give 3000 ton uh, vertical 600 millimeter this way and that way and with a frequency of three seconds and a force of 300 tons horizontal force it's an enormous machine it will take maybe um, uh, one uh, maybe uh, thousand square uh, thousand meter square area now characteristic of the bridge in a tabular form this i have copied from uh, three uh, uh, 317 uh, this uh, um, 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 euro 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 um, 1337 euro euro on uh, bearing code now next is uh, and moreover the handout i have given to the uh, structure e people i structure there the whole thing is given already there you, if whoever is interested, you can take it, but you can take it from Euro also. And my slideshow is also given there. But you know, for a presenter, unless the slide is shown, it is never finished. So maybe six days back or 10 days back, I have handed it over to, I have mailed it to ISTRT, but I made some changes in today in morning and yesterday in the day if we for improved performance we give some attachments to bear this you can see from <laughs> bottom how much movement has taken place on the positive side on the negative side contracting expanding then there is a level here a level is fixed here on this page and this is the contracting and expanding contracting and expanding movement. Next, I am going to touch a very, very sensitive issue, grouting. It is never done. I have crossed 55 minutes already. Anyway, I don't know how much you will permit me. I don't know. It will not end. Maybe. No, no, you can carry on now, uh, okay. uh, Professor okay. Ghosh. No problem. Yes. Okay. Sir, grouting, I tell all my listeners, all my friends who are listening, grouting is a very, very sensitive issue. You don't use the grout on the site before you try on the ground. Please try the ground, grout on the, your water, your fine sand, your, uh, the mix you are buying from somebody. So these three combinations behave peculiarly. I am telling you kindly take my word for it. You try it on the ground somewhere, then you use it. And this this uh, wall, this uh, wooden wall, it must be liquid proof. So ground should not come out. La la ground is not really very liquid. It's semi-solid, but still it should be sealed. So this is shuttering plate. Grouts are being poured in, and this is sealed already. But you wait. Uh, there are various systems of putting jacks in between the cross gutter to take the hold and to keep the level left correct for grouting and then you release the jacks after 24 hours or whatever the grouting manufacturer says or whatever you have found out in your site now national international code these i'll go very fast you know these are the various codes 1337 euro in 11 parts we are making our, then there is ASTO, Australian, Canadian, Japanese, etc. But in the world over, Euro and ASTO are prevalent. Whoever is, you know, consultants, our countries is also doing work in foreign countries. But normally Euro people or American people, they are the consultants. Sometimes the Japanese are also consultants. So depending on the country, where they are doing the work, how much power they have. The country has the power. They will say, no, 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 follow this code. Or the consultant has got more power. Who is giving the money? So that way the code is selected. <laughs> I'm sorry to use this term. Who is giving the money? Anyway, <clears throat> so for inspection, we start the inspection from the raw material. So 
everyone will have a quality assurance program qap written down you as a purchaser can ask the qap copy of the qap and you can follow the steps of qap uh, various stages of inspection you don't the one thing you and there are two types of tests one is a type case which you don't do on all bearing you do once you develop the mix for elastoma or once you use the steel and routine test you do in 3% of the bearing 20% of the bearing depending on the purchase document but one thing i can assure kindly note my young friends particularly please note that a, a, a quality is never made by the inspection no quality is made by the intention in the company not in the end you go in the end ah, i'll see the bearing i'll inspect it i'll test it quality is not built like that quality is done in every step in every process in the production then we will we'll very shortly cover seismic forces everybody knows this is the energy diagram of seismic forces it goes on changing it goes on changing and depending on the stiffness it can be it can be higher like this and lower like this oh, elastoma is a great vehicle for absorbing the seismic forces <clears throat> the result of seismic and this is in bengal ishwar gupta setu this these things have happened so people has put up uh, this <clears throat> bridge to overcome this joint a very peculiar thing while this bridge was being constructed by hindustan i used to go there once a month the tickets were from the railways or the executive authority so the my uh, tickets were handed over to me by the railways and i used to stay there for one night and every month there are um, there is a meeting but some of the time i met the arya arya saab was there also i met uh, professor of rurki wind i met him there from the, my first i don't know 50 years back but one thing has happened very peculiar this pipe spans from the edge are moving like this so one this was observed that was observed by the compression of the expansion joint elastomeric expansion joint so the railway is put up a office at the edge and they are every day they are <clears throat> having a look and then satellite uh, measurements are taken etc this is a 5 km long bridge 28 uh, spans failure in bridge yes yes see this is in bengal again my pictures are mostly in bengal uh, i carry the you see this has happened to the bearing this has happened due to the <clears throat> movement of the abutments these are simply a single span simply supported deck and abutment has moved inside abutment has moved inside so you can see the base and one thing some something i find with the designers they make the uh, base plate the saddle plate optimum ah the movement is 83 mm okay make it 100 mm but provide something more you i i will come to these instances of of being miserly by our engineers uh, you know but you you increase the cost by being miserly at some point this cost is hardly 3% of the you know, 2% of the bridge cost so we don't be miserly please use a little bit of uh, give it a little bit more it doesn't cost it costs hardly 0.01% but the life and other things of the bridge will be usable life will be much more this has happened and and this practice of making uh, cut rollers not a good practice not a good practice effect of seismic this is 
This, this picture is taken in approach to Nivedita Shetu. The flyover approach to Nivedita Shetu. In the process of procurement, as Mr. Hegade said, I like to call a spade a spade. In the process of procurement, in my country, there is a style called lowest price. So these bearings are procured from some company who has not fully vulcanized it. They have just delivered it. And so the, the plenty of errors, plenty of replacement has to be done. I'll show you a few more in the same brief. You see, it has not been fully vulcanized. So you can see these cracks. After you see, this is a bearing which has taken out from the uh, support from the UC. The same thing, the same approach. This is not vulcanized. This this bearing is not fully vulcanized. Anyway, now maintenance and cleanliness. This is a bridge in Austria. Look at this beauty of approaching the abutment cap. But I am sorry, in my country, this will be misused by people. The same bridge in Austria. Then look at our one of one bridges in Calcutta in Balikan. In a city, everybody is going every day there. This is many entries coming out from the joints, expansion joints. <clears throat> this is something which this slide I prepared this morning. You see, <clears throat> this is the Ultra Tanga flyover. This is the PR cap. This is the pier. This one has fallen down. So I got the opportunity of taking this picture. And this is the face. Tell me, sir, where the man will stand? If the bearing face, where? This is a criminal offense. Our course uh, should be much more strict that eight people or six people must be able to stand over a pier. In our code, we say there has to be positive space for replacement of the bearing. Here, no such space is there. And replacement of the bearing will not be done automatically. A man has to stand there. Five people have to go there. There has to be jack. I'll show you later how jacks are put there. So how the people will go there? These are criminal offense. These people, they are saving five lakhs but they have increased 20 crores to the life cost of the bridge. Total foolishness. Uh, in, um, uh, in all my friends who are listening to me, I am sorry, I have not been able to go to the question and say, now I am in this. We'll take it later, uh, Mr. Hagade. So uh, to all my friends who are in the design office, who, who are in the execution, who are purchaser of bridges to everybody I will suggest, sir, please look at your peer. Please look at the railway peers. Therefore, 10 people can stand there. There can be, you can put a dining table on a railway peer. So, please, from the executor's side, whoever you are, sir, please insist. I don't mind, the, I mean, this is a tender. If it is a um, uh, what do you call uh, it? some tender where price is given and oh, anyway design tender even if it is design tender that must be one of the conditions that in the design there must be space for standing of eight people on the pier cap and that cost should be incorporated I have spent more time on this slide since I am in my 60 years of professional life I am vexed on this 
space on PF cap. Now, in inspection of the, there is a funny, this is uh, in um, uh, Colony. Some, some bearings here were displaced. A committee was made, but nobody could approach it. Five years, the committee was uh, making three, four meetings a year, and that's that. But then the chief engineer requested me, and then I was doing designs. This must be 20 years back, more, maybe 25 years back. So he made a put in hands. <clears throat> I said, can you remove the light post? He said, no, no, no. Civil engineering, not electrical engineering. That is another department. They will not permit me to remove light post. I said, okay, we'll design a equipment which will obviate the non-removal of light post. So these are four panels as it approaches. And this is not self-driven. This is a lorry tire. It has got lorry tire. But this is pulled by something, some tractor, some lorry or something. So when you go there, you remove one panel. It passes through. I cannot include all the slides here. And then next, next, next. And it passes through. So this is a kind of inspection equipment. This cost 8 lakh. But the next one I'll show you cost three four crores. This cost three to four crores. We have got about five in our country, east to it, north, south, and one in the central. You know, it is automatic, hydraulically operated. Moog and other companies. So we are using this and we are looking at some bearings. And this, this pool is me. Now one thing, again, when there is a railway crossing and there is a question of uh, inspection of bearings or switching of bearings and something, be very careful about these light lines. Railways are very reluctant to give you um, uh, this shutdown or whatever you call it. So you have to be very careful when this point, this was again introduced this slide yesterday evening, since uh, Shama Dotto, who must be one of the listeners, he told me, uh, you must talk about the um, railway lines uh, replacement or inspection of bearing, how to do it. Anyway, how to do it, I am not telling you here, but you know, use your own intelligence, but railway shutdown is necessary and you have to be very careful. Next, replacement of failed bridge bearings. There are a few slides. These are tall stands on jack. These are jack, hydraulic jacks with locking devices. I'll show you flat jacks also. You have to support. Uh, these are flat jacks, steels box, flat jacks. So you have to, unfortunately, uh, either two, if the, you don't want to disturb the expansion joint. So mostly six, three on this side, three on this side, or four on this side, four on this side. And if it is not connected that by a very complicated expansion joint, then you can use only one span, one, one end of the span. So these are elaborate arrangements with structures and all. Support, you always give support. Whenever you use hydraulic jack, you always give additional support. Hydraulic jacks may fail. Okay, I am almost at the end of this lecture. There is a second part, but with the permission I made for going. So I'll show you two very special bridges. This is a bridge over a highway for animal crossing. But this is a bridge, full bridge. And this is my most favorite. This is about 200 kilometers from Shillong in Meghalaya. This is a living bridge from creepers. But these creepers are not dead. They are living. Two deck bridge. For, for the uh, IA structure, 
I this bridge behind they have covered. Then I have got another cantilever erection of steel bridges and a ready-made uh, slide show. Another is Howrah Bridge and Robindra Shetu with their mechanisms and all. Then I have got another underground engineering part one uh, slide show. Now this uh, Mr. Hegade, sir, yeah, is, yeah, bearing, uh, bearing part finished. But yeah. Then, there yeah. are few more. If patient permit, time permit, what is that? A few major yeah. bridges in India and their bearing system. How much how much time it will be taking, uh, Professor Ghosh, if you have to talk about those three? How another, much time? 15 another? minutes? 15 if it's, minutes? No, if it's 15 minutes, it's okay because uh, we have got a time up to 5.30 as per the uh, our announcement which we have made. But you should be able to complete it within the 15 minutes because now we are already 5.15. At least I would like to carry on with the question and answer for another 15 to 20 minutes later. But uh, you, have to other, other, you have to finish within 15 minutes. Then you can carry on. No, no. I'll do it in 10 minutes. Fine, fine. Please okay. carry on. Please carry on. Okay. This is our Honda Bridge. Yeah. This is the system. This is supported here, supported here. This is hanging. This is dead weight. This is dead weight. And this is cantilever portion. And I will not go into detail. This is the this is not this is the deck. This is not the bridge. The bridge is this one. This is the support system. This is the bearing for the Hora bridge. Okay. About one one point five meter by 0.8 meter. Slightly. Uh, this is the system. PR1, PR2. I'll go very fast. You know, uh, it needs to be tied at the two ends for the system to operate. Everybody knows it. I need not explain. This will take more time. Expansion joints at this end, tied. This is giving the force. These are the bearing system. I, I, I was in the installation, so I know the story. This is tight, bottom tight. And these are the bearing system. Now they are talking of changing all this again. The changing is another story, I'll tell you. These are the bearings here. Sliding gate. View. Well, I, I, these two cranes are also designed by me. My farm is at that time, but it was designed by me. And presently, I am doing a lot of cantilever erection cranes. Now, uh, these are the comparisons of the two. Earlier design, head space. In the new design, the head, clear head space is much higher. Consumption of steel, consumption of steel per kilometer. This system broke down. And that is another story. No time for it. Some other time. This is Naranayan Shetu, five kilometer long. This is the beginning of Naranayan Shetu. These are the temporary bearings. These are the permanent bearings. In this railway bridge, this is Padna. Padna. Anyway, this is designed by me. Again, the, the, that side, this side, this is designed by me. This is the transport system during erection. The, the lateral bearings. Men, what bearings? But I, I, I should not advise. We should use lateral bearings. This is the <clears throat> cable state bridge, uh, extra dose. This bearing used, you know, uh, the balanced beam used uh, a, a bearings and eight bearing in per joint, 16. Being erection, being erection. No. Anyway, done. So I have finished it. And there are few more, always there is no end to it. Be this is a lovely bridge. I, I, I was there in this in the push launching, Panmal. This, design, this was designed by me. <clears throat> uh, uh, Larsen and Tupno was a contract. Push launch, push launching with okay. uh, people standing on the pier, changing the uh, leaves of sliding bearing. This is another story. You see, they, after 40 years, this bearing was initially supplied by Metco. After 40 years, 
They told me, no, 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 we, want to we are changing the slope. We are changing the value. I said, don't change it. It will last another hundred years. The new one you will purchase by your purchasing process will be worse than this. Said, no, 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 we have to change it. I said, come on, uh, bring out the change bearings and I will have a look at it. These are the earlier bearings, 40 years back, this was made and they have been replaced. This is the new bridge. This is the new bridge in Calcutta, replacing the Jubilee Bridge. Beautiful structure. Ha, Erasmus Bridge. This bridge, Delhi Bridge is uh, almost uh, similar to it. I, this, uh, I was there in Erasmus. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this bridge, I just specifically went to Rotterdam to have a look at this. Ah, 50 kilometer. This bridge is 50 kilometer, 52 kilometer. Ah, there is a market on this bridge. <laughs> Tower Bridge. My country, my school bridge. Thanks. Done. Thank you. Thank you. I think, uh, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Ghosh. I thought uh, we should have had uh, some more time uh, for illustration of some of the case studies which you have uh, uh, explained really about this uh, second Ugly Bridge, Aura Bridge, as well as uh, as well as uh, second Nimedita Bridge. I that would have been interesting, but uh, I think we will have a separate uh, presentation if uh, Alok uh, uh, permits us to have uh, the another presentation by you, as well as I see Mr. Goshal also among the participants and uh, on Havra Bridge as well as uh, second Hugli Bridge, both of you can speak together. And that will be very interesting. That's what I, that's what I think. I, I, uh, I, just, I, just, yes. I just interrupt, yeah. it, interrupt yeah. you once. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The 75 years of Havra Bridge was, uh, was spent and then Victoria Memorial, they were given the liability yeah. by the Tata. Yeah. And then they, uh, they arranged a lecture where uh, I was one of the speakers and Ghoshal Da, Amitabh Da was another. So, uh, so, so, so we so can we repeat do. it if, if the IAS Shakti uh, wants it to be repeated later. That's a prerogative of uh, uh, Mr. Mitchell as well as uh, uh, Mr. Bomik who are there and they will decide it later. But uh, coming back to our presentation mm -hmm. today of uh, Dr. Professor Achut Ghosh, all of you agree that it was uh, an un, you know, like in, in imitable uh, uh, presentation where he explained that the background principles of the bearing so lucidly. And also he had some precautionary uh, advice to all the designers uh, not to be miser in the sense not to dimension the components of the bearing so stringently, st uh, so, uh, miserly that it uh, uh, will not be able to take some of the unscheduled forces which may come later during its uh, uh, service. Also, I really uh, like the way he explained the design for inspectability as well as the maintainability. I think that's a need of the hour. In fact, uh, uh, many of the, our bridges, uh, the bridge accessories like uh, bridge furnitures, like uh, bearings, uh, expansion joints, etc. in our country needs. He highlighted by illustrating an example from abroad somewhere. I think uh, all of us uh, agree with that. And uh, I have got some uh, questions to Mr. Uh, uh, Professor Ghosh, but before that, uh, I would like to invite uh, Alok, uh, also one of the experts in uh, bearings and expansion joints in our country. Alok, you would like to add on to what uh, Professor Ghosh uh, said, if you are around? Uh, yeah, thank you, um, yeah. Mr. Higde. Uh, what an excellent uh, presentation, as expected, you know, a very comprehensive, very engaging presentation and uh, like a true stalwart, you know. I mean, the nuts and bolts of uh, bridge bearings, he has explained so beautifully. And of course, uh, you if you give him two hours more, he will still continue. And <laughs> <laughs> so, but what uh, I think uh, his suggestions to have few more uh, webinars to cover other aspects, which he mentioned in this last slide, certainly uh, in IES Trakti, we will uh, schedule with him. And we can have a series of lectures by Professor Achyut Ghosh for other uh, elements and maybe a combination of uh, Professor Achyut Ghosh and Mr. Amitabha Ghoshal on Howdah Bridge. 
comprehensively so on the whole i think uh, i can just tell you once again that i uh, when i was a, you know only uh, a fresh engineer uh, i was working with stoop way back in 80s 82 83 and when i was uh, uh, sort of the junior most engineer for a complicated flyover of isbt flyover which is for the first time at that time you know curved flyover a horseshoe kind of a curve with radius 30 meter 30 meter and very complicated and that is the time when i got myself introduced to professor achyut ghosh he was not professor at that time but he was a stalwart at that time and the way i still remember the way he explained to me he treated me like a you know young young fresh engineer and the way he explained the behavior of bridge bearings i think it was extraordinary and in fact my basic lessons on bridge bearings came from achyutda so thank you achyutda you have been my mentor on on this and uh, i i mean i have nothing more to add uh, mr hegde i think you can take few questions from the from yeah. the q and a a lot of questions are there yeah there are uh, in yeah. fact um, thank you uh, alok uh, there are uh, uh, many questions in fact uh, i see many questions from mr alexandros tranolis uh, you know like he has asked uh, many questions about the indian practice of seismic design for the bridges uh, bearings basically and uh, one of the question is does india comments implement bearing design in seismic action similar to ec where seismic displacement and minimum pressure on bearing 3 mpa is required i think uh, certainly that uh, bearing pressure of uh, sort i am not sure about 3 mpa how much it is specified but i think certainly that uh, bearing pressure has been specified in our codes too and also the seismic uh, displacements have to be taken care of in the expansion joint design as well as the bearing and uh, Professor, uh, you want to add on anything? Uh, a lot no, no, to that. Otherwise, otherwise the yeah, bearing, uh, walk, bearing yeah. will start walking. Yeah, I, I just want to mention that yeah. our code is in absolutely in line with EN one three three seven. Yes. So therefore, three MPA is very much there. Very much there, yeah. And uh, uh, there is a question from another stalwart, uh, Professor Tandan to Achyut Ghosh. What should be the minimum distance between the sleeves, uh, Professor Ghosh? Between That's the... a question from Tandan, so I don't want to answer it. I want an answer from another stalwart himself. <laughs> question again, please. What should be the minimum distance between the sleeves? Sleeves, you know, like that, which is embedded to the top plate as well as the bottom plate. The 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 bolts have mm-hmm. to go into the sleeve, right? There is a sleeve. I understand. I yeah. understand. Yeah. Uh, it's a pleasure, Mahesh. <laughs> uh, you you must be fun, having fun at me, but anyway, I appreciate Mahesh is my great friend. so professor tendon see the basic laws of bolts in our steel and concrete that will apply first the amount of shear first it is not necessary that is the first thing but anyway whenever we are designing it we necessary or not we will consider it for the full value so we will take the full value of the shear and take it and the laws of uh, concrete if it goes in the concrete the laws of applicable in the concrete of minimum difference between the reinforcements and all that has to apply but again that concrete has to be very strong you professor tanner must be questioning it regarding that uh, pod bearing that has been shown so much of studs yeah uh, <laughs> well the studs the, the the minimum distance between the studs i cannot tell professor tan on the exact values and all but in civil engineering there must be a codal provision for distance between steels to carry the shear and the carry, carry the tear carry the shear for the steel and carry the compression uh, for the concrete so that law will guide yeah yeah and uh, another question from uh, uh, mr alexandros in india codes elastomeric bearing treated treated as isolate uh, uh, seismic isolation basically is talking about with upper and lower bond stiffness as uh, euro codes i think that has been introduced now earlier elastomeric bearings uh, the uh, uh, used as a seismic isolation was not uh, permitted earlier but nowadays in the new code it has been permitted and the, there are some guidelines how to make use of it in fact in the earlier days i remember uh, you know like some of the bridges because of the earthquake survived 
because of this uh, seismic isolation was not considered in the design of the uh, elastomeric bearings. You know, I remember the classical case of Suraj Bari Bridge, where the uh, elastomeric bearing was provided over there. But uh, I know in the earth, uh, Buj earthquake, uh, the bridge survived because in the design of the elastomeric bearing, perhaps this seismic isolation uh, property of that was not considered. And uh, that uh, absorbed some energy before it being it was being arrested by the seismic arresters. I think it helped there. Uh, but nowadays, I think the code permits uh, to make use of this uh, seismic isolation uh, property of the elastomeric bearings if it is used, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Professor Ghosh, you want to I, I clarify that? Bit, yeah. I can yeah. See, yeah. We, uh, we have to share how much force we are going to take by the bearings that we have to ascertain. So that the structural consultant will suggest. So 50% of the horizontal force. After all, horizontal force is what? Due to seismic, it's an acceleration multiplied by the mass. That's it. Only the acceleration is transferred, not the force. But the yeah. acceleration generates the force due to the presence of the mass. So it is easily, not easily, but with some uh, manipulation, we can, 60% of the forces we can take by base isolators manufactured out of lead rubber bearing or high density, etc. etc. It can be done. Okay. Uh, if I yeah. can add yeah. to what yeah. uh, Professor Achit Ghosh mentioned. Yes. See, I just want to clarify that IRC 83 part 2, which is on elastomeric bearing, it only covers up to low damping elastomer. Yes. Is, uh, the damping 6% and less. So, but as a base isolation for high damping elastomer, where you can take advantage of, uh, you know, higher damping characteristics, say lead rubber bearing, etc. That is not covered presently in IRC 83 part two, uh, but uh, one can use, you know, other international guidelines for that. Uh, it can be used in some project, some projects in India. We are indeed using uh, this high damping elastomeric bearing as well. Yes, that's correct. Okay, fine. I think that's a uh, uh, thank you for that clari clarification, Alok. And uh, I think Professor Ghosh, I think there is a, I think it must be your friend, uh, one Mr. Nanda uh, Dulal Dasgupta. He says that he started his career 40 years back. Since then, we used to consult Professor Ghosh regarding bearing matter. <laughs> Hearing this lecture is like listening to audio of an epic from the writer of the epic. I come think on, uh, that, I is a, that is that is that is that is that is appreciation which has been given by Mr. Das Gupta. Please accept the bouquet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Friend. Yeah. And there is a question from uh, uh, Thirunava uh, Karasu, uh, Mr. M, and it's about this IRC 83 Part 3 specifies the minimum theoretical clearance between the top edge of the cylinder and the bottom edge of the piston. At, this, at the design rotation should not be less than 5 mm all around. In case of PSE girders, after pre-stressing and while fixing the bearing, top plate on soffit of the girder, which is not the level surface due to hogging, uh, that 5 mm may not be there. Kindly advise how to maintain uniform gap all around top plate as well as the bottom plate. By, by using differential grouting, by using even a, a, a tapered plate, uh, various solutions are there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, in continuation with this question, I've got a question uh, uh, to you, Professor Ghosh. You see, yes, sir. in case of the fixed, fixed bearing, uh, let, let us say it's a pot bearing, fixed bearing, you as a manufacturer, manufacturing tolerance, you allow some play, though it's a fixed bearing maybe 1.5 mm or 0.75 mm or not, uh, whatever it is. Can that be considered to be allowed in the allowable movement later in the design? No, that you consider, that is a peanut. You, uh, cannot, <laughs> you cannot go on collecting peanuts to make up on your uh, structure. No, no, please. It, it and is, one thing, sir. Yeah, I just uh, want to tell you one additional statement yeah. from your earlier answer uh, to which I gave earlier. That is, normally, this type of sensitive bearings 
are fitted with plastic bolts yes. to keep the alignment. The plastic bolts are of such strength that the moment the actual bridge action starts, then the bolts will shear. You need not remove the bolts. So mm -hmm. with these plastic bolts, the level of these is aligned, everything. So that 0.5 millimeter, 0.3 millimeter, that is taken in the grouting. So things are all level by a uh, spirit level. And then after four, 24 hours, you release and the plastic bolts break. Yeah. I yeah. think I have been able to clarify. Yeah, plastic bolt uh, fails. But even though that movement is a peanuts, sometimes it helps. Uh, 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 I will... Uh, uh, I, I will tell you that. That's a different... Uh, that's a different... Uh, well, well <laughs> the percentage of 60 meter and 120 meter with 0 0.0005 meter. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, there's a question about this uh, Kalia Bomra bridge, I believe. That is, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This, this bridge is, you know, like I've seen so many times this Kalia Bomra bridge, uh, Professor Ghosh, because uh, when I was in Gammon, I was constructing a bridge parallel to that Tejpur bridge. Incidentally, that was designed, that is designed by our uh, a Bomik, Alok Bomik, who is uh, here. And uh, almost, you know, like the superstructure construction was uh, going on uh, when I uh, left Gammon. So it's very, very, I've seen that Kalia Bomra Bridge many times, though you are once in a while gone uh, on the hospitality of the railways by their tickets. I have, <laughs> I have gone and seen I have, very, have six, 50, 60 times. Very, very times, I too. But in that connection, there is a question here. How was that Assam Bridge longitudinal rotation problem solved? I think you are saying it was moving, uh, not longitudinal, you are saying it was moving transversely, okay. right? It's yeah. really a slip pit. I mean, it's really a slip in the art, the whole pipe spears, the uh, the, uh, the uh, 1.5 meter diameter piles, everything taken together, probably there is a slip circle below in the art. Probably that is the prognostication. So what has happened? It could not be stopped honestly, but there is a 12 member, 12 member team. They were given a on the mm -hmm. approach. Uh, mm -hmm. They were given a, a a building was made for them, and they stayed there, and they always check and uh, they take the uh, data from the uh, from the uh, from the high up and uh, somehow later on it stopped by itself okay maybe okay. The, the, the 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 compression uh, expansion joint was compressed fully there a touch and it stopped uh, by grace of god no if i understood you properly what you said was i think it was uh, moving in the transverse direction right no, 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 uh, uh, uh. no, longitudinal. It, it was, it was a compression. The gap in the expansion joint is getting compressed. Okay, okay, that's okay, it. Okay, that's okay, it. Okay, okay, fine. And uh, there are uh, uh, some more questions uh, from Mr. Tranolos. If the design required to provide anchored bearing in some location, what he means is perhaps uh, knuckle, uh, picture, bearing. Uh, knuckle bearing. Do we have to provide it in the tallest pier? That's his question. Uh, Professor uh, uh, Ghosh, you would like to answer or uh, you would like Mr. Alok to answer this? Why not, Alok? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a very learned man on this subject. I no, know no, a little no. bit. He knows Mohavarat. No, 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 not that. Not that. It's an analysis. No, no, it's, a, it's an analysis question. So I think it's a, it's a, what the question is, if you have to provide an anchored bearing, whether it has to be on the tallest uh, PS, that's the question. Uh, well, uh, you see, anchor means basically you are uh, you are going to resist uplift. I mean, the upward reaction, vertical, not lateral. You see, normally you go to the tallest pier if you if it's a consideration of lateral load where uh, due to earthquake where the flexibility uh, you can take advantage of. But if it is a if it is a uh, anchor, which means the issue is that of uh, you know uplift then I don't think consideration should be a tall pier or short pier. It should be generally, you know, this uplift should come uh, uh, what I can envisage. One, re one area where uplift can come is due to the transverse seismic. Mm -hmm. I have witnessed in mm -hmm. several mm -hmm. bridges mm -hmm. where one bearing can get uh, uh, uplift. And many a times I find the solution is to increase the lever arm or the spacing between the bearing transversely. Mm. Uh, rather than to accommodate it and provide the rock anchor anchor bearings. 
Okay. Can I, and, can I, Mr. Agade, can I add to it? Yeah, yeah please, please. You see, for carved uh, flyover, best is you can make three, four uh, spans continuous. This mm -hmm. is one. And then another thing is uh, in the Panmal, where I have shown uh, 80 meter tall piers, what has been done, there are 800, 800 ton horizontal force into two, 1600 ton of horizontal force of the whole span, 600 meters. Hmm. was taken care of in the abutment by elastomeric bearing in a vertical plane. I see. That was okay. developed there. And this technology we have used in Delhi also, Delhi hmm. flyovers in 1978, central guide, elastomeric bearing, taking lateral and longitudinal horizontal forces with a protuberance from the deck. Yeah. I, I think this question has been originated. Uh, it is my conjecture. It's my guesswork. Maybe that uh, uh, because of you explained about the null point, you know, uh, you are yes. explaining the concept of the null point. That is why the question may be from Alexandros is that if you have to provide the fixed bearings or if you have to provide a pin bearing, whether it has to be provided than the when he meant uh, when he said that the anchoring, I don't know whether he meant by the, really the anchoring what uh, Mr. Bomik is talking about. He may be thinking that it's the provi provision of the pin uh, bearing, whether it has to be provided. At, at, at a tall pier. That may be the question. Honestly speaking, whenever there is the original force, I'll go to the strong support, strongest support of them. Maybe I'll, I'll transfer it to the other. No, no, by, by strongest support, by, by, by virtue of its stiffness or uh, uh, what do you mean by strong? By, by stiffness. Is, by, stiffness. Uh, by, by stiffness. By stiffness. Very strong. Yes, uh, very yes, strong. Of okay, okay. Of course. Okay, fine. Uh, there is another question from... Uh, uh, Vijendra Kumar, sir, is any code which suggests a type of bearing based on span length also suggests span length for providing elastomeric bearings? And this is a, you know, this has been the question, you know, to what uh, spans will have to provide the elastomeric bearings and beyond which span? I think it has been the old concept was there, you know. Uh, uh, the question has, uh, I think, uh, arisen out of that uh, old. Uh, theory to what spans we can provide the elastomeric bearing. Uh, Professor Ghosh, I think you should take this question. Yes, I will. Yes, you see, sir, the concept is not what span physically you fix. It's a mm -hmm. question of what is permissible. After all, elastomeric bearing has got certain guidelines. It has, you see, if you make it too much tall, it will fail by stability. So uh, if 40 meters, 45 meters, 50 meters, you have to solve the bearing to satisfy the requirements of the court. And if it is okay, it is okay. If yeah. you fail to solve it, then there are additional support like steel protuberance, like uh, horizontal bearings, all solutions we have in our hand. Yeah, yeah that's true. And uh, you will have to accept another bouquet from another stalwart, one stalwart to another from Professor Prem Krishna. A very comprehensive and engaging presentation from a true stalwart. It is one stalwart to another stalwart. I think uh, that you please uh, accept that bouquet from him. Uh, <laughs> sir, <laughs> Professor Prema Krishna, thank you very much, sir. I started meeting you first in this stage pool bridge in the <laughs> meetings. Yeah. And then later on, we are meeting almost very frequently in this um, 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 NCRTC um, railway meetings. Yeah. I'm a member of TAG, Technical yeah. Advisory Group. Professor Prema Krishna, myself, we are both members. Yeah, there is a question from Mr. Gaurav Ghosh. I think uh, this question uh, is that uh, what should be the ideal uh, or a preferable uh, uh, damping ratio uh, for the base isolation system? I think it depends upon the isolation system which we have used, I believe, right? Because as, as uh, Al uh, Alok has explained, if you are going for a uh, regular elastomeric bearing, what damping ratio should take and high uh, density elastomeric, what should be taken? I think it's been given in the course. Uh, I think basically, if I'm not mistaken, would you like to take that question, uh, Professor Ghosh? What should be the ideal damping ratio, preferable damping uh, ratio? Uh, whatever I have designed, this kind, yes, yes. normally 50 60 percent is taken. Normally, mm -hmm. but then it depends on the consultant. It depends, you know, there are two aspects one is the building. Of the structural consultant, another is the damping uh, production people. So they take that K value 0.5 or 0.6, whatever, from the structural consultants. No, no, 
now 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 i think it's a code of courts uh, our courts are also giving the you know the damping ratios to be considered if i not uh, uh, alok would yeah. you like to yeah, yeah 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 so basically you know our courts are still evolving in yes base isolation is concerned yes so the, if you really go through the international guidelines or euro codes and all ultimately the amount of uh, damping uh, the stiffness etc will all depend upon what is the permiss permissible allowable deformations that you can allow in the bridge at the deck level though that is not well de uh, defined as of now in our codes but mm -hmm. eventually that is the guiding guiding factor by which you can you know if you make it uh, too flexible if the damping ratio is very high it will amount to large deformation uh, so there has to be a limit on that so i think i think uh, it's a gray area and uh, the designers are using their discretion and uh, the international codes and guidances on this as of now yeah there are a lot of questions but i don't want to go any questions unanswered so i need your uh, uh, i hope everybody will bear with me that is uh, 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 mr choudhary is asking mr ghosh whether elastomeric bearings were used in vidyasagar setu in vidyasagar setu that is i think second ugly perhaps he's talking about yes 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 in various forms yes 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 to give okay. the vertical support against the tension to give the side support um, um, sliding and elastomer yes in various combinations elastomer with ptfe plain elastomer to take the vertical load of the tension column tension cables etc it is there so many places yeah. that i have shown in little bit in yeah so uh, i am not surprised many stalwarts are giving you uh, bookcase uh, professor ghosh mr josh kurian also has given a bookcase and he is requested that you should be talking about uh, bearing monitoring using drones you know uh, sometimes <laughs> sen 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 sensors sensors and drones <laughs> I, uh, i think kurian uh, uh, for uh, mr regade yeah. mr kurian he started your dream bridge Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Mr. Kurian, thank you for thank kindly you. Uh, attending. Thank yeah. you very much. We have got long. It's Mr. Kurian was a member of the bearing committee also for some period, for yeah. maybe two, two, three years. That is six years total. Yeah. I I I thought it's an interesting question uh, for me at least. Uh, uh, he wants uh, Mr. Bhattacharya Prabhati wants your opinion about the seismic arrestors, uh, uh, to Professor Ajit Gosh. that as per the courts we have to provide the seismic arrestors in our bridges uh, professor uh, uh, prabhati bhattacharya asked uh, your opinion about this seismic arrestors against the seismic forces those arrestors are peanuts uh, so it is a mental thing it is a mental thing it's a mental thing and it looks or it, it doesn't look good also it's right it's, 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 if you really want to have seismic arrestors as uh, the railways has done you must have additional arrangement you know yeah. they are quite weighty arrangement enormous arrangements uh, uh, yeah 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 hello yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah yeah i just wanted to clarify this yeah. you know the function of seismic arrestor is basically to prevent dislodgement of the structure yeah. and uh, to a large extent uh, you know it helps for example you take the example of surajbari bridge which you mentioned yes yes, yes 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 yeah. it 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 did not dislodge Mm. uh because of the presence of uh, this uh, seismic stopper there the stoppers have a different function but uh, what i find is uh, it looks very ugly unesthetic and uh, the, some treatment is required in designing the seismic stoppers so that you know it can be it can be camouflaged very nicely and this requires a bit of uh, aesthetic uh, sensibility you know of the designer Yeah. it can be done but but it is generally ignored in many cases i find yeah i i would like to add a little bit here there are two schools again in the railways that got a toothed gear system yeah. in their each of their rollers so that is a great help it doesn't permit the rollers to get dislodged after all all the rollers four rollers normally railways use very often so <clears throat> they are not of similar diameter so in case of seismic uplift is 10% which is never fully uplift but in case of any loose thing the roller will not fly away and second thing in foreign countries where well, there is a single roller there is a gear 
and rack arrangement. The top and bottom plate contains the rack and the front of the uh, roller, there is a gear on the two ends. So that is a beautiful system. Yeah. Arista. Yeah. And uh, you also have got many uh, bouquets from uh, Mr. Khan, uh, Dr. V.V. Choudhury and so many others. Uh, and uh, the list is all long. I am not I able to read out the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The list Thank is long. Very much. Yeah. It has been my great I, privilege yeah. to having associate with so many learned people. Yeah, Rajiv. Yeah, Rajiv Hoja is making a point that uh, you know, like this uh, seismic isolation principle was not taken into consideration while designing earlier days. That is the reason, uh, unknowingly, you know, it was giving a, a benefit to us. You know, in the energy dissipation earlier. That's the point I made, and Hoja is repeating that. And uh, Sanjay Bhattacharya is asking, what what the know-how about replacement? Pot PTF bearings of continuous pan with the pier having fixed pier head, monolithic, and others having pot PTF bearings. I think it's uh, if you've got a fixed uh, monolithic pier that's in the cantilever uh, kind of construction, on the other side, bearings will be there. How it can be replaced? I think that probably is the question, you know, uh, Professor Ghosh. Yes. You, do you mean the Tejpur type of bridge or what exactly is the question? I, I think perhaps the Tejpur type of bridge, Kaliya Bombra type of bridge. A monolithic pier is there. On the other side, bearings will be there. The, the suspended oh, span or the connected yeah. span is hardly 400 tons or uh, 350 tons or like that. So that normally it is 5 meter to 15 meter. So that can always be raised by a jack. That can be jacked up and uh, yeah, uh, I think that provision can be made in the design. And okay. these guys in Japan, uh, what they have made in Dhaka, they have made in Dhaka um, that kind of bridge. And they have put an elaborate platform below that uh, area so that a man can stand, he can put the jack. It's a lovely system. That's in Dhaka. Okay. I Fine. had a privilege to have a look at it over <laughs> one of the rivers, Jumna, I think. I think there's a question from Mr. Narang. Uh, I didn't understand, but I, I think you may understand this. What is the treatment if there is one to two mm gap between down strands and bearing top plate? Is it allowable or not? I am not really understanding this question. What is the treatment if there is one to two mm gap between down strands, down stands perhaps, down stands and bearing top plate? Down what? Down stands. I think perhaps pedestal is talking about. But I, 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 I guess so. And uh, bearing toplet. I think I, I, I may be wrong in giving the answer, but grouting is the answer. Grouting is not done properly, that means. If there oh, is a I gap, think. yeah. If there is a gap, grouting is, I think grouting is the answer. You're right. Sir, can injection, you explain? Injection yeah, grouting yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, perhaps. Certain things in life, you know, has to be done. You know, there is no escape for the mistake. So there are always, you are doing a heart operation. I mean, then what are the options if it stops, this, that? <laughs> that kind of thing cannot be answered, honestly. Okay. And there's a question from Mr. Chawan, Yogesh Chawan. Sir, can you explain about the recentering of HDRB or LRB after seismic event? <laughs> uh, high density. In uh, what? In lateral axis or longitudinal axis? Uh, I think it, it has to be lifted up and uh, it has to put uh, jack, back, right? Jack, jack. It has to be lifted and there put are back. Jack, there yes. are jacks which gives a vertical movement and also horizontal movement. There yeah. are jacks, you know. So that kind of uh, jacks can be used. Okay, fine. And uh, the question is from uh, Mr. Uh, Parag Mandle. Sir, is it common practice to design bearings for a fleet post in service case? Or should we restrict the uplift in ultimate limit state case only? I think uh, this question would like to take or uh, we'll leave it to Alok. This is uh, a... <laughs> Alok. What is the question? Can you repeat? Is it common practice to design bearings for uplift force in service case? I think it's normally only for service. Case. Or should it, should we restrict the uplift force in ultimate limit state case only? I think it's but reverse, yeah. right? I think, I think <laughs> under any circumstances, Yes. It's better to avoid uplift in bearings. Yes. Yeah. Whether, whether it is in the service stage or in the ultimate limit stage. 
it is better to avoid uh, uplift i think i think that was... i can i can add my one pen here one pen here yeah. that is you know in this uh, limited ultimate limit stage we 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 design the things so that it stands the appurtenance it should stand the ultimate limit stage why not the appurtenance these are appurtenance there we need not be uh, penny wise uh, and miserly uh, to do these things i don't know whether i have done the answer correctly or not okay i hope that satisfies the uh, questioner and uh, the next question is from La nagraj c is asking are there a specification for this uh mpwe which you explain in india in indian specification is asking you know, what happens they, they these are patented by uh, two uh, two major companies in the world and uh, they say the, you, you check the characteristics uh -huh. i have, i am not promising the composition i am not promising the chemical uh, physical i mean physical composition manufacturing technology i am not giving you that but i am promising you certain physical properties that is so much of friction so much of path so much of uh, load so much of tear so much of etc so you check it in your laboratory i am happy okay then there is a question from mr uh, uh, mainuddin mohammad it's, it's excellent discussion for knowledge as well as refresh of idea i think it's a okay for you uh, uh, professor ghosh Thank and you, uh, i'll come to this uh, mr prati giri what is the most suitable bearing type of priestess uh, slab bridges with length more than 20 meters i think i, I think professor ghosh you should ask on that more than 20 meters uh, what is the most suitable i think you said that uh, spherical is your best friend <laughs> that's not no, it's, it's a it's a very solid uh, yeah. it takes lots of uh, additional forces which has not been counted for which may be encountered during seismic or unusual occurrences yeah you know, we do our calculations taking 100 year seismic or 120 year seismic but nature doesn't know what kind of conditions we have accepted in our design so for unusual condition you are using a system which can take a beating of five times its design load 10 times its design load that kind of thing that's what i was uh, aiming okay there is a last question uh... in the question and answer box uh, from uh, prabol mujumdar you know sir what kind of bearing is used in london bridge <laughs> kidirpur bridge where decks can rotate vertically i think that's the last question to you professor ghosh london from Muj from mujumdar what london bridge mujumdar i do not know he said used in london bridge kidirpur bridge basque i think he's talking oh. about bascule bridge bascule bridge bascule bridge yeah yeah of course oh this is a elaborate mechanical system yeah, i yeah. mean uh, uh, pardon me hegade uh, you must be knowing that i am a mechanical engineer basically yes i, I am not a structure olog has not given me an permission to enter his uh, is structure <laughs> you are no engineer at all you know, we don't consider mechanical engineers as engineer anyway whatever but say that vascular bridge how do you say like that if the two ends are like that just yeah. there is a there is a sort of support one end comes first the other end takes a support there is a hunch like that and it's like that at the center but otherwise the mechanical thing is bearing gears bearing large bearing gears and everything it's a elaborate system yeah i think uh, with that uh, professor ghosh uh, yeah, we are coming one second yeah one second we are uh, one second here yeah uh, we uh, are uh, we are coming to the end of the question oh, and know. answer see movable you know that this is yes. a big bridge uh, can you can you can you no no, no i i think you let to bring it uh, uh, closer to your face can you see no okay. we are not able to see we are not ah, now ah, now ah, we can ah. see now, yeah. now we can see yes you see it's a, the same book but the same company this this book this book uh -huh. Uh -huh. yes okay. i see you, you all yeah. know 
But yeah. actually, this book you do not know that is movable bridges. Yes, they are yes, published yes, also. Yes. So yeah. our uh, our system is covered here. I will suggest you look at this book for for the bascool bridges, right? Yeah, bascool for the bascool oh, bridges. There yeah, are two hundred types of bridges, bascool moving these. Correct. Like, yes, 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 yes. World. Okay, uh, Professor Ghosh, I think. Uh, uh, we are coming to the end of this uh, particular session because our question and answer box is empty. After answering your, all your questions, you have very re religiously answered all the questions. All of you agree that uh, it was an excellent uh, presentation as has been told by so many stalwarts uh, among our participants. Uh, and uh, I also extended, extend my bouquet to uh, Professor Ghosh for his excellent uh, presentation. And I told you that I promise you an inimitable of his own style presentation, which is not a conventional presentation with a lot of advisors. Uh, Professor Ghosh has uh, touched upon very, very important points like grouting and the design for the inspectability as well as the maintainability. That's very, very important. And also he has explained so beautifully about the background principles of the bearing design as well as the installation, what precautions to be taken, et cetera. I think, uh, Professor Ghosh, we are all uh, enriched uh, by your uh, uh, wisdom and the knowledge, and uh, our knowledge is also enhanced. I'm happy to say that. I hope uh, uh, the, all our participants also felt the same thing. And that the, your testimony of your popularity of your presentation is expressed by the number of people still remain among the audience. It's almost around 180, 190 people are still left. Normally, that is the kind of only the registration we see in other webinars. Very excellent presentation. And uh, we look forward to you for your uh, you know, sharing of or dissemination of the knowledge which you have gathered for last uh, 50 to 60 years of your uh, career. Uh, uh, as uh, Alok said, if it, uh, sometimes it, it may happen that we would be hearing you again about the Howrah Bridge as well as uh, uh, Second Hugli Bridge along with uh, another stalwart uh, Mr. Go, uh, Mr. Amitabh Goshala, uh, he has, uh, in fact, incidentally written a book on uh, Howrah Bridge, and uh, which, yes. is an, which is an award-winning book, in fact. It's received yes. uh, a lot of appreciation from London Press. That's what I understand. We would like to hear from you as well as uh, Amitabh Goshal. I hope he's still there among the audience and listening to our fleet, and one day he will exceed to that and uh, give a webinar on that. Uh, we would... Uh, Expect it to be a joint webinar between you and uh, Amitabh Goshal. With this uh, words, uh, I will hand over this uh, uh, the virtual podium back to the organizers. Uh, Alok. Thank you, thank you, Hegde uh, Saab. What an excellent moderation to such an excellent presentation by a stalwart. I think uh, you both of you, uh, and with the interaction that we have had after the presentation, even that made up my day. Excellent. Uh, I think it was, as Mr. Hegde mentioned, it was very enriching to the participants as well. And uh, I look forward to many more such presentations from Professor Achyut Ghosh in the times to come. In the next one month or two months, I will schedule some presentations, uh, some webinars in December and January uh, after talking to him. And uh, I thank all the participants, all the uh, uh, you know, even our uh, back-end support, uh, Mr. Vikas Verma, Anamika, for uh, organizing this and uh, profusely thank Professor Achyut Ghosh once again and Mr. Hegde for moderation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank I, you. I, good, I, good night. So good night I to all. To, I <laughs> want to give one last statement. I am thankful to Indian Association of Structural Engineers. I am thankful to Alok Bhomik. I am extremely thankful to for conducting it in this fashion and giving me all the love that I may not deserve. Yeah, yeah. Thank Professor you. Ghosh, you may be octogenarian, but you are still my friend. I yes, may be very you. junior to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank Good you, night. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night.